I'm never really sure who I'm speaking to when I'm doing these webcam things, but by 2017, I think uh, it's one of those things um, I will have to figure out who the hell am I talking to. Um, but I think it's every you know everybody that goes on YouTube and everybody that tries to figure it out. Um, I'm sure they keep. It's almost like being Madonna, right? I think what Madonna does is she picks out one person in the the audience and she kind of focuses on that person to get her to get her groove on. Um, so I don't know, except in the case with a camera, you don't really have any, you, you can't have any one person in mind, so you don't know who you're talking to. Um, all I know is I'm staring at the camera and that's it. Um, but anyway, on to videoism. This is another videoism, episode of videoism. Um, and today I'm going to talk about, just very briefly, because it's one of those heavy philosophical things, it's called deism, and um, I just have to remind you that I'm not a philosopher, but I do find a lot of these concepts interesting. Um, if not for the fact of being interesting within themselves as they relate to atheism. So deism is another um, theological slash philosophical argument about the existence of God and his um, ambivalent int uh, uh, intrusions and, and um, interventions in, in creation. Um, deism uh, to some level sounds like creationism to me or intelligent design um, but the cold version of it seems like it's just kind of you know um, you know sort of like the the redundancy of God or not even the redundancy really but sort of the exclusion of God from anything that really matters or anything that's of importance in terms of theology um, I mean the cold aspect of deism you could say that you know there doesn't even have to be a God um, you know um, and what I've been hearing lately is that basically the, uh, the universe had no beginning. So, I mean, it makes God even less relevant. Um, you know, uh, any cosmological argument you could have stating that there is a chosen or even um, uh, some, sort of, some sort of choice that was made in terms of a, an infinite regress um, and, and uh, an initial cause would be sort of, um, you know, Kind of uh, stupid to make because what would give one choice of uh, of a, a candidate in in an infinite regress any power over the next? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if it's infinite regress, it's infinite regress. I mean, so what? The the ones that came before the the, the candidate that you've chosen is somehow relegated to non-existence just by your philosophical or or, or theological understanding of you know cause and effect. Um, I don't know, doesn't make sense to me, but deism is basically the fact that, you know, God exists outside of of what existence is, and, you know, um, he may or may not have had some sort of uh, in, in intervention in, in the way things played themselves out. Themselves out. Um, I definitely don't think that deists think about the Adam and Eve sort of um, anecdote, because I don't, uh, uh, oh God, I think even Christians today don't think about the Adam and Eve uh, anecdote as, as being... Um, as being um, real or holding any weight, um, but but I think that's that's the, that's deism, and uh, you know um, there was something else that kind of uh, interested me in the newspaper yesterday, and it was about honor killings. Um, now, apparently, you know, according to a Star article, there's there's five thousand honor killings a year, and that's that's globally. Um, in Canada, we have, in the U.S., where religion tends to hold this very sort of, you know, almost a capitalistic uh, ferocity to it, um, there's uh, 27 honor killings a year. Um, now, these are, uh, you know, the way the article was written, they sort of gave the impression that these numbers are kind of, you know, iffy, you know, they have to, they have to sort of judge and um, go through some sort of due process uh, to, to understand what constitutes an honor killing. Um, needless to say, a lot of these honor killings happen within a religious context, um, and even then, I'm 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 kind of stepping outside the relig the religious borders of honor killings and saying that well, maybe crimes of passion are honor killings because somebody was embarrassed because of you know some sort of familial or, or relational guilt or, or um, you know some sort of you know lack of understanding of, of of why a person would do that to somebody. else. You get the point. Um, in Canada, there's a uh, I hope I'm quoting this correctly, but I mean, it, 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 whether I'm quoting this correctly or not doesn't really take away from what my point is going to be, but um, I'm still trying to be correct. Um, there's 12 
honor killings. Um, there were 12 honor killings in Canada between uh, 1999 and 2009. So that's 12, and that's within 10 years. So maybe one every year, right? Um, my issue with honor killings is not that it's, it's, it's a statistically massive problem or that it, 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 it necessarily um, speaks to um, you know, violence in general in Canada. I mean, you, the automatic response, and this is part of my point as well, is that while there's so many other killings in, in, in Canada or in the world that aren't related to religion or related to honor, um, why would you want to focus on this? And I think that's what most um, proponents of of religion usually say, or proponents of a more liberal aspect of of dealing with religion and, and, and discrimination and, and and things like that, and religious sensitivities, um, they'd say, you know, well, these crimes are not they're not that pervasive. They're not they're they're very they're very few in number, and they, you know, they 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 don't. They don't. Uh, they don't mean anything in the larger context of violence, or you know, gun violence, or murder, or or crimes of passion, etc., etc., etc. But I think it's important to kind of keep in mind that with honor killings, this isn't some sort of xenophobic or some sort of religiously motivated, uh, you know, um, you know, interreligious uh, hate uh, motivated crime or anything like that. These are people killing their own family members. Like they're they're killing, they're killing their family members. So okay, so you can scratch you can, you know you can scratch xenophobia off off the list. You can scratch you know interreligious uh, hate hatred. You can scratch that off the list. You could um, there's so many you know th these are people who are killing their own kind. Now what does that mean? Like I mean, well it kind of it it, it shows a. a it shows a very dark side of religion. Like it shows a, it shows an extremely, you know, an extremely cannibalistic nature of of religion. I mean, to kill your own son or kill your own daughter. I mean, okay, so maybe that's honor killings, but maybe that's a familial affair. If you want to go, if you want to go that far, maybe that's their business. That's their religion. That's what they do. But I mean. What does that say about somebody who is part of a religion that that merits this type of behavior, this type of crime? And what does that say about people planted amongst the population that's usually a little bit more liberal or you know freewheeling? Um, and what does it say when the criticism of these types of crimes include this, the statement that well, there's only been twelve in ten years? What does that say about the general mindset of people in religion that do these types of things and, you know, expect to get away with it under some sort of religious law? I'm not saying it's a huge issue that needs to be tackled right away. I'm saying is it's representative of a mentality on all sides that tends to protect religion and treat it as if it's, it's something to be handled internally. Um, no, I you know I know these types of crimes get their their due process like you know I'm sure they do, but what I'm saying is, there's criticisms that come across as kind of protecting the religiosity. Um, a very sort of light example of this, and you know maybe has not so much to do with, you know with 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 killing, but um, hijab day in Ottawa that was another example of. You know okay well. You, you know, and the article that I read about it kind of made made the point. So I'm not you know, I'm kind of plagiarizing here, but the, it was true. I mean, you know, the like I mean, a hijab in Iran or in Afghanistan or any other sort of you know um, extremist state or or Islamic state uh, is representative of of oppression. Um, you know, why would why would the capital of Canada political capital of Canada want to create this 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 euphoric understanding of 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 wearing a hijab like I mean it, it it's already a contested issue I mean and you know like why would why would you want to want to play that up anyway it's you know in Canada it's probably a personal choice to wear a hijab I have no idea um, I generally think that it should it should be a choice, but I also think that there are a large number of 
uh, people people in the world that you know that have to deal with wearing a hijab under a, a very um, constricted constricted um, circumstance. Anyway, that's my thing on that. I know it's a, a little bit um, you know open ended, um, which I want it to be. But <laughs> that's my that's my problem. Um, but anyway, uh, I I think. Uh, uh, that's what I think about these honor killings. They they tend to be reflective of, um, of a mentality of of kind of ignorance uh, or of of of, of superficiality, um, but you know not not necessarily on in in the in the in the um, you know the the judicial or the the legislative you know aspect of 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 killing somebody because of honor. But I mean in 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 a cultural sense or in a, in. A, in a, in, in some sort of like you know uh, uh, politically motivated or um, or uh, culturally motivated sense I said that already but you, you get the point anyway that's my video for today and uh, I think I covered everything um, yeah that's about all I have to say so I will talk to you later bye